Hello everyone, this is Brox Gags. I'm going to make this video where we'll look at the motion of this crank rocker mechanism. And specifically, we're going to try to investigate the accelerations of different links or different points on links of the mechanism itself here. And so you can see a quick image of the mechanism on the left hand side in its current state as far as uh, the crank link AB being positioned 30 degrees above the horizontal axis and a few dimensions in here of uh, some important links on the links. And then our task down here, you can go ahead and read it. Um, it's kind of a extension of what we did with the velocity, um, where we're talking about the crank. It's going to go through this linear ramp in terms of angular velocity. So it's got a non-zero acceleration. Right, that being the angular acceleration of link AB. And we're interested at a specific point in time, 4.47 seconds after it starts this ramp. Um, we're given some information that at that instant in time, the crank, again, the crank's link AB here is rotating at 322 degrees per second in the counterclockwise direction and has an angular acceleration at this point of 72 degrees per second squared, also in the counterclockwise direction. And our ultimate goal is to determine the magnitude of the total linear acceleration of point C. And you can see point C here is the pin joint between the coupler and the rocker on the right hand side. So the pin joint is between BC link and CD link there. And so since we're talking about um, the total linear acceleration of point C, um, one of the prerequisite steps is going to be the velocity analysis. And so what I've done already is shown the velocity analysis where we can figure out the velocity of point C and also the relative velocity of C relative to B there. Um, from that term C relative to B, we could actually figure out the angular velocity of the coupler link here. And so that's what I've, I've got here. I'll just kind of freeze the image there a little bit uh, so that if you wanted to, you could pause it in terms of YouTube and take a more detailed look at that. But um, instead of velocity analysis, we are on to bigger and better things, if you will, and we're on to the acceleration analysis, um, which I've got another image of my diagram set here. And so what, again, we're after is the total linear acceleration of point C, which is way down here in the bottom right. And so um, let's first th draw some vectors that we know. And so we should be able to figure out both the normal and tangential components of the acceleration of point B here. Uh, in order to do that, we need to know a few things about B's motion. Well, point B at the end of the crank is just going to go through a circular path as it rotates about point A. And also, it's helpful to note that we've got some omega here, where this is the angular velocity of the crank, as well as some known alpha here as well. So there's my omega and alpha, and this is of link A, B here. Let me check real quick. Yes, I called that probably link two above. And so just to be consistent, let's take these out and just call this omega two and alpha two, where two is going to be the crank as far as the number we'll associate with it. And so since we have both of these, um, we can determine the normal and tangential components of B. And so here the normal component of B, remember the normal component is always going to point back toward the center of rotation for the link. And so it's going to point right down the line between B and A. And this will be the normal component at B there. And then the tangential component, um, well, the tangential component is associated with speeding up or slowing down along the path. Uh, so that's one thing to think about. Um, also another thing about the tangential component, it's always going to be perpendicular to the normal component. And it also has to agree with the direction of the angular acceleration of the link. And so it has to agree with alpha 2 in this situation. So it is going to point upward and to the left, just like so. And so here's the tangential at B. Uh, notice it's going to be perpendicular to the normal component and it also has to agree with the angular acceleration of the link. And so we should be able to figure out both of these vectors. And then the total linear acceleration of point B would just be the vector sum of the normal component of B and the tangential component of B. And so we're after the total linear acceleration of point C. And so if we take a look down here, uh, C is also just restricted to pure rotation about the fixed point D there. And so here we 
can easily draw its normal component, just like so. Here's the acceleration normal at C. And then we also have to figure out the tangential component of C. And at this point, we don't necessarily know what the tangential component at C is going to look like in terms of the magnitude, uh, because that would require us to know the angular acceleration of link CD there. And so here, I know it's going to be perpendicular to the normal component, but I've got a choice. Does it go up and to the left or down and to the right? Uh, and since I'm doing it analytically, I really don't need to spend a whole lot of time thinking about that. Um, I'll just assume in one direction here up and to the left and then I can use the math to basically tell me uh, whether I chose the right direction or not and by use the math I'm talking about uh, letting a negative sign show that I have the incorrect direction specified. And then finally we've got to have a way to link these two points and so the way we're going to do that is through a relative acceleration equation. And so if I'll write over here on, near the right, uh, my relative acceleration equation that's going to basically be running this problem is going to be the acceleration of C is equal to the acceleration of B plus the acceleration of C relative to B. So very similar to what we were talking about in terms of velocity analysis, really. And so one thing that's helpful to do at times is break these down into the sums of their normal and tangential components. And so instead of just looking at the complete total linear acceleration of point C, I'm going to break it down into the sum of its normal component as well as its tangential component. And I'll do the exact same thing for the other two vectors. So now my vector equation is going to go from one equation with three variables to now one equation with six variables. And we are almost there. Here we are, just like so. And so I've already talked about the normal and tangential of C, the normal and tangential of B. Uh, what about the C relative to B? We haven't really talked about it much. And so um, here I should be able to get the entire normal vector figured out, the acceleration normal of C relative to B. And so when I do this, I think of C rotating about point B at this given instant in time. And so the normal component is going to point from C to B. And so just like so, and that's C relative to B. And I should be able to come up with the magnitude as well. Um, here I'm thinking that the normal components omega squared r or v squared over r is the formulas for us. And so I should be able to determine that. Uh, the tangential needs to know the angular acceleration of the link, though, so I'd have to know the angular acceleration of a uh, link, what I would usually call 3 or link BC here. Uh, that I don't really have at this point, um, but it will be a product of solving this vector equation. Um, but I do know that the nor tangential component and the normal component always have to be perpendicular to each other. And so I can go ahead and assume a direction. Here I'll assume down and to the left. And I can call that the A tangential of C relative to B there. And now I have discussed each of the six terms here. And so one of the things I like to do just to make sure my thought process is right is go through and leave myself little notes about what I know about each of these vectors. And so, for instance, point B here, I can determine both the direction and magnitude of the normal and tangential components. And so... Uh, this is just something I do to help myself with kind of bookkeeping, is I underline it two times uh, because I know th both direction and magnitude. Same thing with both the normal components of C and the normal components of C relative to B. I know direction as well as magnitude on both of these. So we're good there. And then the tangentials. The tangential at C, remember we only knew the direction, right? We knew that the direction had to be perpendicular to the normal, but I don't know the magnitude of it. And so only one underline here, 
And then same thing with tangential of C relative to B. I know that has to be normal or perpendicular to the normal component, a C relative to B. But I don't know the magnitude of it either. And so just one underline there as well. And so at this point, I'm thinking to myself, well, I've got two unknowns here, right? The magnitudes of the tangential C and the magnitude of the tangential C relative to B. And I've got one vector equation. It's a 2D problem. And so I can always split this thing up into its i and j components. Uh, that'll give me two scalar equations with two unknown magnitudes, uh, which I should be able to solve for those magnitudes out of that. It's just going to be an algebraic system at that point. And so that's the, the plan for our solution, at least to get the uh, magnitudes of the tangential at C and the tangential of C relative to B. And so after that, I'm really, we're just going to be playing vector addition to um, answer the question of what is the magnitude of C. Uh, but then I'll probably also expand a little bit and talk about how I could use these tangentials uh, that are unknown in order to figure out the angular accelerations of different lengths. And so really all we have left to do is to walk through uh, this vector equation, go point by point, and determine the magnitudes and the directions, basically write each of these vectors in i and j notation, if you will. And so we'll just start on that right now. And so here, let's go ahead and pick one of the points. So let's call point B uh, the driving point. It's on that crank. And so we'll have a analysis right here of point B. And so remember, point B is at the end of the crank right here. It's inclined at 30 degrees. And so we know both omega and alpha. Uh, it's kind of sliding up here. We also know the velocity of point B. Uh, notice the velocity of point B is roughly 16.86 inches per second. Uh, the angular velocity of the link AB, the crank, is 360 degrees per second. That's one revolution per second, or two pi radians per second. And so I'm going to use, let's see here, the uh, magnitude of the normal component to B is something I need to solve for. Um, here I'm thinking omega squared R or V squared over R. Uh, here I'm just going to go ahead and use omega squared R, where this is really omega squared times, what's my R value, you say? Um, that is going to be the L3, or excuse me, L2, the length, betw the length between A and B there. This is times L2. And omega 2, um, we said that was 2 pi radians per second. And we're squaring that, and the length of 2 is 3 inches. And so give me one second, I'll grab my calculator. 2 times pi squared times 3, uh, 12 pi squared or roughly 118 0.435 and let us see here I grabbed the wrong number ah yes that is the from rest to 360 degrees in 5 seconds. That's what it would have been at 5 seconds, excuse me. We're not quite to 320, 360 degrees per second. We're at 322 degrees per second. My apologies. And so here it won't be 2 pi radians per second. Uh, so here if I wanted to follow the same logic here, I would have to do something of the nature of converting that. And so here, um, let's go back and let's say 322 degrees per second at this instant in time. Uh, times, now we need to convert this to radians, so we could say uh, pi radians over 180 degrees. That gets me to radians per second, and this will be the omega, and I'm squaring that now times my three inches here. Uh, so my apologies there. Uh, I grabbed the wrong angular velocity from above. And so 322 times pi divided by 180 squared times 3, uh, 94.75 roughly inches per second squared. Uh, very good. And so now I need to know the direction on this thing. And so one way I could look at this, I'll go ahead and get to green here, would be to kind of think of 
horizontal line tracing right through here. Uh, this angle right here should also be equal to theta 2, um, which is 30 degrees, so it's 30 degrees below the negative x-axis, if you will. And so we should have something like uh, the magnitude of the normal acceleration of B was that 94.75, and so we can say now the normal acceleration of B is equal to, um, that's going to be third quadrant, so it'll be negative I and negative J components, so negative 94 Point seven five times the cosine of 30 degrees I minus 94.75 times the sine of 30 degrees J. There we go. And so that is looking pretty good. Uh, for, so now for the tangential component of B. Uh, well, the tangential component of B will be R alpha is the formula I'm thinking of for the magnitude. And so we'll say the magnitude of the tangential at B is equal to R alpha. Um, here R is again L2, and this alpha is alpha 2, or the angular acceleration of the crank. And so L2 we said was 3 inches. And then alpha. Alpha is going to be given above uh, being careful here at this instant, the crank is rotating at 322 degrees per second, that's omega, and has an angular acceleration, here we go, of 72 degrees per second squared. And so 72 degrees per second squared. And again, I've got to convert that from degrees to radians, so pi radians over 180 degrees should work. And now we should arrive at the magnitude of the tangential component of B. Uh, I've got roughly 3.77 inches per second squared here. And so now we've got to figure out the direction for it. Um, here I'll just make a small sketch off to the side here. And so here, I know the tangential at B is kind of pointing up and to the left from our previous discussions. So I'm going to sit something like this. I've got a horizontal line right here I could draw. Uh, the link AB or the crank link sits something like this. Here I know that this angle here is 30 degrees from what we've talked about before. Um, here's going to be a right angle here, and so this angle here also has to be 90 degrees, and so this angle with respect to the negative x is going to be 60 degrees, just the complementary angle of the, the 30 below. And so uh, now that I've got it, that angle with respect to, say, the negative x-axis pointing off into the second quadrant, um, I can now write the tangential component in terms of i and j. And so here I'll just do it right here, the, the tangential of b... Uh, the I component will be negative, so negative 3.77 uh, times the cosine of 60 degrees. That is I plus 3.77 times the sine of 60 degrees J. There we go. And so now I've already got the first two terms on the right hand side of my equal sign for my vector equation. I've got the normal component of B and the tangential component of B figured out. Um, let's just keep going off to the right and look at the relative terms. And so um, we'll make another header if you will and say the relative here and I'm talking about C relative to B there. And early I mentioned I can figure out the magnitudes of this. And so I'll say the normal component of C relative to B. I should be able to come up with the magnitude of this guy. Uh, here again, it's a normal component so that my brain automatically turns to omega squared over R and V squared over R as the root formulas for me as far as just getting the magnitude. And so let's go with the V squared over R. And so this would be the velocity of C relative to B squared all over r, which that r in this equation 
is r of c relative to b, um, which is a certain link on my diagram. Here, let's go up to the top one. Uh, it looks like it's going to be that L3 dimension there. And so we'll come back down here and say this is divided by L3. Now the velocity of C relative to B, that should be a magnitude we know from our velocity analysis. And so right here, the velocity of C relative to B, you can see is 21.84 inches per second. And so we'll just grab that from our previous work. We're going to square that, and L3, I believe, was 8 inches. And so here we should be able to get to 59.62 for the magnitude of the normal component of C relative to B. And so again, this is 59.62 here. Inches per second squared, again, is the unit. Uh, the tangential component of C relative to B is something we don't know, right? We just have one underline here because we knew the direction of it. And so since we don't know the magnitude, we'll say something along the lines of let the magnitude of the tangential of C relative to B equal, say, AT C relative to B. Uh, notice I don't have the vector hat here, and I've also just converted it to a lowercase a as well. And so this is just going to be a, a unknown magnitude, and we'll have to solve for this variable eventually. Um, also, things to, to think about is that once I solve for this, I could write this out as C relative to B. The scalar magnitude is equal to R C relative to B times alpha. And this is alpha 3 is what I would generally call it, or the angular acceleration of the coupler here. R C relative to B would just be that L3 uh, dimension again, 8 inches. And so after I figure out the tangential of C relative to B, I could use this equation here in order to figure out the angular acceleration of that link. Um, but again, I don't know the magnitude at this point. And so we will have to do a little bit of work in order to determine the direction now of C relative to B. And so here I've got it loosely drawn here, off to the right, or excuse me, to the left. And so here we'll make another quick little sketch. There's a line representing link BC. Here's a nice horizontal line here. And we've got the tangential, I believe, of C relative to be pointing down into the left here. And so now we need to look and see if we can find any information to help us out here. And the velocity of C relative to B here, we've had to figure out theta 3. And theta 3 is this angle here, which should also be the angle here. Um, then I've got this work right here to figure out the angle with respect to the negative x-axis. And just because of the way I've assumed the velocity of C relative to B, that should be in the exact same direction as the tangential component of C relative to B. And so I'll just use this directly, 23 degrees, as this angle right here. And so again, now that I have that, I can write the tangential component in C of C relative to B in terms of I and J components. And so here, uh, in third quadrant, so negative AT C relative to B times the cosine of 23 degrees. And that is the I component. And then minus the AT C relative to B times the sine of 23 degrees for the J component. There we go. Uh, so now we've taken care of the relative terms. So we're done with the right-hand side now for the left-hand side. Uh, so point C is our next item to look at. And so quickly try to knock those out. Uh, so here's point C. And so point C, uh, the normal, we've got two underlines, so we should be able to figure out the magnitude as well as the direction. And so I usually start with the magnitudes. And so we'll say the magnitude of the normal at C. Again, omega squared r or, or v squared over r. Um, let's use the velocity of C squared all over r, where this r would be the distance between C to D. Um, so that's going to be the velocity of C 
squared all over what was most likely L4, the way I usually number these things. Yes, L4 is 6. <clears throat> so now I need to figure out the velocity of C. And so the velocity of C should be something that we already heard received in our velocity analysis. Here we have 29.18 inches per second. And so I'll bring that down here. So I've got equals 29.18 inches per second squared. And our L4 vector, or excuse me, L4 link is 6 inches. So 29.8 squared divided by 6, 141.9 inches per second squared. And now for the tangential. Oh, nope. I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, I need to write this in I and J notation. And so here the normal, you see points right back toward the rotation point of the rocker. And so here's the line representing the rocker. Here's a horizontal line. The normal at C is going to point right along that, right back here. And now to determine a angle. And so see if we have anything from our velocity analysis to help us out here. Um, we're given theta 4 here. And so theta 4 should have been used at some point. Here we go. Theta 4 is 102 degrees. And so we should be able to use that. And so this angle here is theta 4. Uh, that means... that this angle here should also be theta 4, which was 102 degrees. Uh, this angle would then be the supplementary of that, so 78 degrees. And we can now use that angle to get the normal component of C in terms of I and J components. So here we got first quadrant, so positive I and positive J. And so I'll quickly write the normal component at C is going to be 141.9 times the cosine of 78 degrees I plus 141.9 times the sine of 78 degrees J. Okay, and so once more we've got to discuss the tangential at C in greater detail. And so again, the tangential at C, um, we do not know the magnitude of. And so let's say, let the magnitude of the tangential at C equal ATC, same way we did above. Um, here we need to know the direction. And so getting back to my first drawing here, I said it was going often to the left, something vaguely like this. So a tangential at C here. I know there has to be a perpendicular relationship between the tangential and the normal, so that's a right angle there, um, which should get me this angle here. Um, that would be 90 minus 78 degrees there, uh, or 12 degrees here. And so now that I've got that angle, it's in the second quadrant, I can now write the I and J expression for tangential at C. And so it'd be negative ATC times the cosine of uh, 12 degrees I plus ATC times the sine of 12 degrees J. Whew. A fairly long process just because we're looking at six different variables there. Uh, but at this point um, we should have everything ready to write now the relative acceleration equation, uh, this guy here that we did the underlining with, in terms of both I and J components here. And so to speed this up a little bit, let's see if we can use a little bit of some one note functionality here. I'll just copy and paste this, we'll say right here. And let's get the eraser out and remove this bit. 
And now the idea is that's the vector equation. And so now we're just going to write the same equation except for look at just the horizontal and then look at just the vertical components. And so here, I'll say this is just the i components here. And so now the normal component at c, just the i expression was right here. Got most of it there. It's 141.9 times the cosine is 78 degrees. There we go. And then the tangential at C was right here. So then we'll have minus ATC. So minus this guy, and so that's just the terms on the left-hand side, just looking at the i components. We've got equals, then we've got the normal at b. Uh, that was one of the first ones we figured out, way up here. And so yeah, as you can see, we're just picking apart this vector equation, looking at the horizontal components and literally just copying and pasting a lot of our previous work. And so there's the normal at B, now the tangential at B, looking for just the I component. Here we are. There's my tangential at B. Now the normal component of C relative to B. Well, it appears we skipped a step here, didn't we? Um, I just see the tangential component of C relative to be written in ING notation, so we'll have to go back and write this one really quickly. And so the normal component of C relative to B would be pointing right along this line right here. This angle here would be 90 minus 23 degrees. Uh, or 67 degrees there. And then here I'll just write it right underneath the tangential. It'll say something along the lines of the normal of C relative to B is equal to um, negative 59.62 times the cosine of 67 degrees I minus, oops, not minus, but plus 59.62 times the sine of 67 degrees, J. There we go. Uh, my apologies there. Uh, and again, the magnitude is right here. And so we were after the I component of that. There we are. So that's the normal serial to be. Now the tangential serial to be, the one right above it. So it sits right here. Uh, so there we go. There's this vector equation looking at only the i components of it. And so as you can see, we've got two unknown magnitudes, ATC and ATC relative to B here. And so we cannot solve this one for either of those directly at this point. Um, but luckily, I have now another equation I can write, another scalar equation, when I look at just the vertical components of this vector equation. And so now we'll do the exact same thing, except for hunt down the vertical components, or essentially all the j coefficients. And so normal at c, doing exactly as I did before. There's the normal at c. Uh, the tangential at c is here. It's like I missed the plus sign, but that is fine. I can put it in. There we go. And this is going to then be equal. I've got normal at B next. So that's near the top. So the normal at B, and I'm looking for the J component. There we are.
tangential at B next. And so tangential at B, here we go. There's my tangential at B. Now normal C relative to B. Again, looking at J components. And switch back to the pin to complete the plus sign here. And finally, the tangential at C relative to B. And there we are, almost there. There we go. All right, so it's taken us a little while to get here, uh, but now we're at a point where we can now solve a system of equations for a couple unknown magnitudes. Uh, the tangential at C, as you can see here, and the tangential at C relative to B. Now I've got two equations, uh, two unknowns. It's basically time to solve the system. Um, you can do it in a lot of different ways. Um, I'm just gonna pull over here and get my Sage Math Cloud worksheet going. And so first thing I'm going to do is I'll define a function called radians just so I can convert degrees to radians. And so return z times 100 and, or pi divided by 180 here should work. Just go ahead and do something like this. Invalid syntax. Ah, I don't need the def colon there. There we go. I um, also need to define a couple variables, and so my variables vv underscore c and v underscore cb, uh, that will be uh, the, oh, excuse me, not v, a. Uh, let's go a, t, and a, t here. And this will be the tangential component of c and the tangential component of c relative to b here. And now it's just a matter of writing our equations. And so I, I'll do something like i equation here is going to equal... That's 141.9 times the cosine of 78 degrees, so 141.9 times the cosine. Uh, here, it's expecting it in radians, so I'll call my radians function, and then go radians at 78 degrees. Minus here, at underscore c times the cosine of 12 degrees. So we'll just do something like this. Double equal sign there, negative 94.75. times the cosine of 30, there we go, minus 3.77, times the cosine of 60, now minus 59.62, times the cosine of 67. So here, trying to go fairly quickly, just to keep the time on this video somewhat close to manageable. And then minus at underscore cb times cosine 23. There we go. Let's see if it accepts it. Yes, it does. And so that should be um, just what we writ wrote in one note there uh, for the i components of that vector equation. Uh, now for the j, a lot of it's going to be the same except for cosines will be changed to sines. So there's the first term uh, plus the second term here. So that should be the left hand side. Now the right hand side. There was the normal at B, now the tangential at B. There we are. And now the I believe this is the normal of C relative to B. And finally, the tangential of C relative to B. Okay. And so now we just have to say, uh, solve this. And so I'll say solution dict here is equal to the solve command. We'll put a square brackets. I want to solve. Uh, the equations I equation and J equation is my system. And I want to solve this for AT underscore C and AT underscore CB. And 
I will say solution dict was true. I want the first element in the list, and then I'll just say show solution dict to see if we have something cooking here. Uh, shift enter. Uh, there we are. Uh, it does look like a dictionary there, and I've got a couple values for ATC and ATCB here. And so um, let's make this look a little bit better, and I'll say something like uh, print uh, tangential mag I'll put magnitude magnitude of tangential component of C uh, plus string. Let's go round. What am I rounding? I want a solution dict of ATC or AT underscore C two decimal places. There we go. And print inches per second squared here. And so the magnitude of the tangential component of C is roughly negative 112 there, negative 111.87. And then for the tangential component of C relative to B, so C relative to B, uh, here I would just put a B here as well is negative 267.4 inches per second squared. And so again, I just use SAGE there uh, to quickly solve this system of equations. You could have done it a number of different ways. And so now we're actually to the point where we could uh, come up with our problem. Our problem originally was to determine the magnitude of the total linear acceleration of point C. And so here we're just interested in the scalar magnitude, not in even the direction. And so I can do a little bit of Pythagorean theorem here. Um, I know that the normal component of C here, the tangential component of C here, are going to be the two legs of my triangle, and this hypotenuse here would represent the vector. Uh, another way to think of it is I'm just going to do vector addition um, with the normal component B and the tangential component, or excuse me, the normal component of the C and the tangential component of the C, and then I'll be determining that magnitude. And so here I'm just going to come down here and say uh, the magnitude of the uh, a sub c, we'll just put it that away, and we'll say the magnitude of a sub c is going to be equal to, um, here we'll take the square root, and really it's going to be the normal component at c squared uh, plus the tangential component at c squared there, because I know that there's a nice perpendicular relationship between these two. And so here, the normal component of C is something we've already calculated. That was above here, uh, right here, normal component of C, 141.9. Uh, if you let me drop the units, it's inches per second squared. So here we've got 141.9 inches per second squared. Uh, the tangential component of C, that was from Sage, uh, negative 111.87. So negative 111.87 squared there. And the answer to this question that we posed uh, quite a while ago, I apologize for the length of the video, uh, 141.9 squared plus negative 111.87 squared, roughly 180.7. probably some room for rounding a little bit there, inches per second squared, and so this would be the magnitude of the total linear acceleration of point C. As far as direction goes, if you wanted to know that, um, I would suggest uh, plugging the now known value in for ATC uh, right here, so you now know this vector, I know this vector, I could play vector addition, and then I would have uh, the magnitude, or the direction of this, as well as the magnitude, since so I've got an I and J notation. Uh, just to show that um, other things can be used to check this number, the 180.7 inches per second squared, uh, here I've got uh, the mechanism inside of SOLIDWORKS, and I believe this plot 3 is the linear acceleration of point C, what we were after the entire time. And so here's a graph of it over the 5 second interval. Uh, we were at something like 4.47, and so one thing I can do when I have this plot open in SOLIDWORKS after I've ran it is drop this thing over into Excel, 
and then if I pull up Excel and go to a time step of 4.47 seconds, I'm looking for the value here to be uh, very close to 180. And so here's 4.47. Uh, notice it's very close, 178.18 there. Um, inches per second squared should be the, the units way up here. And so that's showing that we have a uh, pretty good agreement between uh, the SOLIDWORKS results here as well as our analytical result we've been doing largely by hand and with a little help of SAGE here. Um, other things to talk about um, with this problem is now that I know the tangential, let's see the magnitude of it from my SAGE bit, um, I should be able to come up with the angular acceleration of this link. Uh, so that would be something like uh, the ATC, this magnitude is R alpha, um, where this R is L4 and this alpha is alpha 4, um, where link 4 here is my link CD. Uh, similarly, I could also uh, figure out the angular acceleration of the coupler, the link BC here, using this expression right here that we talked about above now, because this ATC or LHB was now an output from my SAGE solution. And so with that being said, I think I'll close off this video. Um, again, sorry for the length, um, just there's a lot of bit, bits and pieces, if you will, uh, to the process for solving for these acceleration problems there. And so again, thank you for watching the video, and hopefully this helps you out in your studies.